My new hobby ended up being a twat online. What have we got here? Clara Batten, TikTok comedian, actress and author. She is here to show you that it's never too late to pursue your passion. I remember someone saying, what, do you want to be an influencer? I was like, don't be silly. <laughs> oh. I'm an actress who does comedy online. The pandemic hit and then I was back to my passion again. I mean, it must have been exciting, but also maybe overwhelming. I mean, nah, everything just- I bloody loved like... it. The year that I was turning 40, I was like, this decade is going to be bloody brilliant. Most of the time, I am playing an alter ego. I don't think anything's off limits. Just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. And I don't want to appeal to the masses either. I don't want everyone to love myself. That'd be a boring place. Right. right, see you later, I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Any skits you've regretted posting? Hello, my fellow leaders. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. Talking to Clara, got me thinking. I advised her to bring her comedy to a real life audience where she can meet her followers eye to eye. And I thought that was a really brilliant, clever idea. But why am I not following my own advice? I want to meet you also. So what do you think? Should we bring Anatomy of a Leader to a venue in London? Maybe I can interview a guest live where you get to ask them questions also. Maybe we talk about leadership, career progression, or maybe, just maybe, I can do a mini TED talk for you as well. If this is something that you would like to do, follow the link in the show notes to be added to a waiting list for an in-person, real-life event. Honestly, I'm so excited, but also a little bit scared to do this. I was scared to interview Clara also. I mean, you never really know what those TikTokers are going to be like. But she has such a fun, witty energy about her. She's somebody that can cheer you up in literally like five seconds flat. So without further ado, here is Clara Batten. Clara, welcome Hi. to Anatomy of a Leader. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So good to meet you in person. I mean, I met you and through you. TikTok of all places. Yeah, I think most people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> most people only know me from there, really. <laughs> and just like, just your hysterical skits, oh. your relatability, like observing real life, particularly this sort of segment of life of being a parent, mother, kids, and just like really like grasping it all. Um, so yeah, with TikTok, how did yeah. it all get started? So um, as with most people, I think it was the pandemic. So it, you know, we all went into lockdown. People were either uh, bored or uh, just looking for stuff to do, or they were getting new hobbies. And my new hobby ended up being a twat online, basically. <laughs> um, as you do. <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh, my, my husband actually very proudly tells this story about how it was him. Um, so there was this, there was this um, viral TikTok dance going around at the time. And then uh, he basically went, you know, I think you could do that. Why don't you give that a go? I, I, keep, I keep seeing everyone doing it. It's hilarious. Da, da, da. And I was like, yeah. Is it because he thought that you would really enjoy that? Or like, what's, what's his motivation behind that? So he, yeah, it's because he knows, uh, you know, I used to be an actress back in the day and he knows I love performing. And he had literally... He's not even a social media person. He doesn't watch social media. He's, you know, he's one of those people who's only on Twitter, you know, just sees like the sort of news, the arguments, the, you know, the standard stuff on um, X or whatever it's called now. I'm not on it. Refuse to go on it. <laughs> and, um, but during the pandemic, a lot more people were starting to use social media because it was a form of escapism. And then people started, you know, and then, and so he was just seeing quite a bit sort of crop up. And so he actually joined TikTok before I did because he said, I've just been seeing these things. So I've just joined this app and um, I've just been seeing these dances. You should do it. And I was like, okay, okay let's, let's do it then. So I just did this dance, which took me forever. It's so much more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, I did it. And then I went, no, you're not posting it to yours. I'm going to get my own account and then <laughs> post it to mine and his. And then, um, and then I just started scrolling and then I realised that people were using different sounds and doing trends and I wasn't quite sure what it was. But um, I started then using other people's sounds because that's what I thought you had to do. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing it going, 
you know, lip syncing or just doing a trend to this uh, all comedic stuff. And then Adam said, why don't you do, um, you know, some of your like comedy skits and stuff that you've, you know, written or performed in the past? And I was like, no, I don't think you can do that on here. I think, <laughs> I don't know why I thought you had to use the sounds already on there. And he was like, yeah, but where do you think those sounds have come from? People have uploaded them because they've done them. And I was like, oh, yeah. So, so then I uploaded some of my own stuff and then... Gradually, actually, I saw someone the other day like liking loads of my old videos. So they'd obviously gone back to the start and been like, I don't know how they'd scrolled that far because it's, you know, four years ago almost. They're very motivated and dedicated. I know. To the <laughs> and it was yeah. quite funny because I kept seeing the thumbnail like Sanso's liked, Sanso's like. And then it was like bringing back memories. So I was clicking on some of them going, oh, yeah, I remember that. And I just remember this, uh, and I saw this one where it said, thanks for 1,000 followers. And I was like, and I looked back and I was like, oh, I remember that. It was about five weeks in, and it was about sort of April 2020. And uh, yeah. Wait, uh, take me back to the early days when you just sort of started. So your, your husband says, okay, you know, go for it. And then you're like, okay, I'll give it a whirl. You know, what's the harm? Like, it could be fun. Were you watching the numbers then, or was it just like, you know what, I'm just going to do this yeah, and I was just do it for fun? Yeah, I was watching the numbers more then. Like, now I don't really watch the numbers at all. Like, th- literally I think it was yesterday I went on to TikTok just I just in the mor- in the morning I tend to withdraw either I'll check my balance if I've made money on there I'll just withdraw it or I'll just check some DMs or something um but as I opened it it hadn't it hadn't refreshed from the day before and then it, I saw the numbers go up like by you know uh 5,000 or something and it would from whenever I'd gone on to, no, not 5,000, about 3,000. And it had gone up, and I was like, and I suddenly saw it go up, and I went, oh, yeah, I can't, I don't even know how many followers I've got at the moment. And I looked, and I knew it was in, you know, 750-something, but I didn't know, but I never checked that anymore. I know roughly, you know, I'll know when I hit, you know, 800, that, but I never check it, whereas then I was like, googling how to get more followers you know I was like I was like how many times do you need to post a day to get more followers like back then I was if I didn't post three times a day when I first started I was really annoyed with myself whereas now I'll post like one every couple of days and be like oh yeah I should probably get onto that so is it like an obsession I mean do I I get very frequently told yes post like at least three times a day I was like when do you fit it in into your life like how did you do that yeah I find that really hard Mm -hmm. particularly um particularly if you're having to write or think up sketches and be funny and you know or, or whatever genre you're doing you know whether you're doing fitness and you have to think of something more creative to make that or you're doing fashion and beauty and you think right well I did that tutorial yesterday and I you know how am I gonna make it a little bit more out there when you're having to think creatively and not just like if I was being given scripts every day I could probably do five or six a day but it's thinking them up and then going right I'll do this one or and then once you I I do a lot of reaction videos but I mean literally they take a couple of hours even though I'm just reacting to each stage of the other person's video but then I edit it and I'm editing between them and cutting it exactly where I want them to finish and my little look to begin and then vice versa. And that, the editing takes an hour and a half, you know, just to, just on an app on my phone. But yeah. that, and so, yeah, it, it does, it does take a, a lot, particularly um, if you're wanting to do the longer form videos, which are sort of rewarded and sent out more by mm. TikTok now. Whereas I, I would do sort of 10 second sketches or just, do a trending like comedy thing early on that would take sort of five minutes to do. I suppose like in the beginning it's all about just getting the followers it's getting lots of numbers you know you just want something like short and after a while especially with the TikTok beta program you know you're having to produce something that's quality which is longer so the the thinking behind it is, is is somewhat different. Yeah absolutely yeah it's definitely the case that at the start you're really wanting to get those get those followers and like you said with the beta program I mean I didn't know anything of the sort back then but you know when you have to reach certain numbers to then get rewarded or to go live you know you can't go live before you've got a thousand I think it's still a thousand followers you know and a lot of people want to go live to get their brand out there or to get talk to their 
followers and talk to the people who are who are there supporting them and so yeah you're you're constantly wanting to but it, it, for me I, it wasn't anything about you know oh, I want to become you know famous online or oh, I really want to you know uh, I want to be recognized in the street for doing this it, it, it was more that I wanted I wanted to do comedy I then eventually wanted to write more and having more followers meant that you could get your stuff out there more which which then ultimately you could so I was thinking of it as like a stepping stone to other stuff maybe but then I was thinking maybe I could I remember someone saying what do you want to be an influencer I was like don't be silly but then I get called an influencer now and I'm like I suppose I am because brands pay me to do stuff to influence people. I'm like, oh no, I'm not. Don't don't. You're one of those. I'm, now. Like, I'm an actress who does comedy online. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot shorter and more punchy. Yeah, yeah. In the early days, when was your biggest break, so to speak, on TikTok? Like, was there a specific video that that was the one that kind of like pushed you out there most? There was one that didn't. I don't think really it got loads and loads of, I mean I've I think I've had one with more views since then like millions of views whereas that I don't think even got millions of views but it got it got passed around a lot so it was it, there was one about 5 or 6 months in in 2020 which suddenly got a lot of traction so Peter Andre uh, shared on his stories and then someone like screenshot it went oh my god I can't believe Peter Andre just uh, said it. and then suddenly loads of my followers are like oh your your sketch has just been shown on Loose Women and it was the same same one and then um, Ulrika Johnson shared so it, like Amanda Holden then off the back of that started following me and then she and then she went live a couple of months later and someone asked her who was her favourite TikToker, and she said, oh, one of them's a woman called Clara Bat, and, and then loads of people came on, and, oh, my God, Amanda Holden's just been live to 6,000 people, and she just said, you're one of her favourite TikTokers. Uh, uh, like, I just kept getting messages, because I saw none of this. Like, I, I was like, why well, it was shown on Loose Women? Thanks, for, thanks to them for telling me. I was like, why, why did they ask me? No, not ask me. Why did they just tell me yeah. that they were showing it so I could watch it at least? Um and then, uh, so it was that, yeah, that, there was just a, that video that was going out there quite a bit. And then I think I got a few more sort of celebrity followers from that. And then, um, and then from that, I got, uh, You Magazine got in touch with me and The Poke did like the top 10 um, parent comedy uh, creators to follow and they they put me in there um, alongside some alongside some really big creators. And I think I only had like fifty thousand followers at the time. So in comparison to the grand scheme of things, it wasn't actually that many. But I just started getting a little bit more press about me. And then um, and then I was uh, and then basically from from that I did a U magazine got in touch with me and said you know we're doing a piece on. Um, uh, basically com female comedians who who have um reached tiktok fame during the pandemic that sort of thing and they said you know would you like to be included with like you as one of the six and so did that and then yeah and then it just sort of like gradually um i remember jeremy clarkson then wrote a article about tiktok in the sun and then he basically said one of my favorite contributors is Clara Batten da, 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 da. and then as he wrote and then he wrote that and then randomly um the head of non-fiction at HarperCollins was about to have a meeting with Jeremy Clarkson so was googling his latest pieces read it started following me and then a couple of weeks later got in touch with me off the back of that um that's amazing and, and said hey can we have a meeting about writing a book and I was like what and yeah and then that's how that happened so it's really weird how it all happened but it all happened over the course of late 2020 to beginning of 2021 that yeah. whole uh that must have been very I mean it must have been exciting but also maybe overwhelming I mean everything nah, I bloody just like, loved it oh good <laughs> <laughs> yeah you come across as a person who just takes things in their stride like not 
overthinking i mean i only met you for what like an hour now but yeah. you know somebody who doesn't overthink things you just sort of like live in the present live in the moment just like absorb it good things come just like yeah just make the most of it yeah i try to um as with anyone you know when life is really busy you can get that sort of god i do feel overwhelmed because i've got this going on this going. but i think that's more when you're having to look after other people as well as in kids um because if it was just me I, when it was just me I did take everything a lot more in my stride but I think you can end up getting sort of more not not anxious anxious is probably the wrong word because it's not to that extent but you know you you get a bit more I was just about to say panicky as well not even that but you know when you're when you do, overwhelmed is the word really yeah. when when you feel like everything is getting a bit wow god I've got to do that and this and this but on the whole, and I always have been like this, I do try to, like what you said, um, I do try to say everything in my stride. And I do think that you've just got to embrace every opportunity with both hands and you've just got to live each day as if it's your last and mm -hmm. really embrace it all. So um, so when, when that was all happening, I just found it really exciting, particularly as I'd been a performer in the past, I was sort of given it up, so to speak, and done a day job and got into sales and marketing and then I was an estate agent in London and then I had kids and then the pandemic hit and then I was back to my passion again and mm. it was all really crazy during the year that I was turning 40 everything was starting again well actually starting more than before because I didn't really make it back then in my 20s when I gave it a shot I didn't actually end up doing it as a living and then it was weird how the year I turned 40 I was I was back doing what I loved but in a weird different medium but it was how working did you, how did you feel turning 40 I, d I didn't care I really didn't care it um I was telling everyone you know I wasn't hiding you know I wasn't sort of uh turn 40 this year. <laughs> you know I, 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 I loved it because actually and I write this in my book that that I think with age and time comes a lot of experience, like way more than you think back in your 20s. I thought I was pretty mature in my late 20s. I thought I had it all sussed out. I thought I pretty much, once you're an adult, as in a grown-up past 18, particularly 10 years later in your late 20s, that you're pretty much on the ball and know what life's about. But actually, as time's gone on, I've realised I didn't know anything really and yeah. how actually immature I was. And I think sometimes it, sometimes it takes having kids to realise how, uh, how able you are actually in life and how much more mature you have to be or how much more responsible you have to be. And, and actually, I'm a lot more secure in my own skin than I ever was, even though I was, I've always been pretty confident. I, I'm, as I've got older, I've become more and more secure, not worrying about what people think, not caring about my image as much. She says, masses of makeup on. Um, <laughs> but look, my hair's all messy, so it doesn't matter. Um, the, um, yeah, and, so, and, and then when I, got, when I got towards 40, and I write this in the book, that I think the best years are still yet to come, even though I'd say my the decade of my 30s was the best yet. And some would say, oh, no, my, my teens and my 20s were brilliant. And yeah, that was great for having parties and brilliant fun, but actually the most rewarding and stable relationships and friendships I've had and uh, the best experiences I've had have definitely been in my 30s. And so when I hit 40 and my kids have got to a certain age where... They're no longer babies or little toddlers. I'm having proper conversations. I'm seeing them develop into these beautiful young people and seeing their characters develop and going to watch them in school stuff and and uh, my career getting better. And I was like, yeah, the, my 40s is going to be the best, yeah. Mm. you know. And I, I was really actually excited. I was like, this decade is going to be bloody brilliant. That's I how I that. looked at it. I think so often 
we not dramatize but we like we look into youth as saying this is the most important thing that's when you're supposed to have the best years of your life i look back at my kind of 20s i had no idea what i was doing and it was actually very stressful because you know you don't really know where you're going you're not necessarily earning very good money either yeah that's true then everyone has all these you're like, renting expe- you're renting yeah. you're having all these expectations placed on you and you're like you know just trying just trying to like feel your way in the world and as you make decisions for yourself and you start to kind of carve out your own path then yeah you just get more confident at least that's what happened to me except for yeah, the time I think, when I, I had think my most, kids yeah I genuinely mm. think most people must feel like that mm. because it you're right when you're in your 20s particularly your early 20s you do feel you don't realize it at the time that there are pressures on you that you never realize that we're actually like just paying your rent at the end of the month you know having enough money at the end of the month after paying your rent you know going oh god did I did I actually um spend too much money on that night out because now I'm thinking like I've still got another week till payday and you know and and image conscious you know and and going on dates and looking at your friends going on dates and going oh God, should I actually be with someone by now? You know, all my friends are, you know, all of these things that you navigate in your 20s that actually at the time you probably don't realise and you just think, oh, this is part of life. But actually it's a hell of a lot on you at at that age when you're, because you're not just enjoying yourself. And Whereas now a lot of people are either settled loving being on their own, not wanting a relationship, or they're settled with a partner. Mm -hmm. But either way, you're all in your own skin, knowing what you want, and you're not feeling those pressures because you're old enough and mature enough to to know, no, this is what I want. I don't Mm -hmm. want kids. Or, yeah, I do want kids, and I've had kids, and now I'm going out for dinner with that couple, with us as a couple, and being really boring. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love that, for me, what I love about turning 40 is just caring less about certain things and caring less about I mean again full face of makeup here but yeah, yeah. like I would never have left the house before without putting on like full face of makeup yeah and it's like dropping off my kids now like you know rain mac socks yeah. tucked inside like trousers <laughs> you know like whatever you know it, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't it yeah just caring less yeah has been such a relief yeah and I really look forward to that becoming even more of a thing as you age so yeah and I love your story of you know you you were an actress you know you said that wasn't you know going so great you talked about being in sales yeah and I listened to a podcast with you talking about how like a lot of actors go into sales and actually that reminded me my, my best researcher who was on the phone all the time I trained her from her being an actress and so she got into brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah. so you really know how to sell you know how to you're talking about being rejected yeah you know that ability to just like brush things off and uh, and yeah. then with your story just you know turning around in a completely different way and I think this is where the world we live in can offer so many exciting and interesting opportunities at any age yeah absolutely and you can do that at any age and I find that that's what's the most incredible thing about the time that we live in now yeah particularly with anything digital you know we um there was never a time so when I first tried to be an actress back in my 20s, uh, well, late teens, actually, I moved to London when I was 17 to, um, and I got an agent then because I'd done in a, a sort of intensive course during my A-levels. And back then, it was, there, was n- there was no way of uh, doing anything that you wanted to do without training, as, you know, going through training, then you get an agent, then you go to auditions, then you get it or you don't. Because actually, I'm, you know, I've got an acting agent now and I'm doing auditions quite often. And, you know, I've only got two out of, two parts out of, you know, probably 25, 30 auditions that I've had since getting this agent. So if I was purely relying on that for my passion in performing... I wouldn't be performing much and I would be doing what I did in my 20s which is going you know what I've given this a good shot for a few years I'm not making a decent living out of what I love doing most days I'm getting one episode here for you know a few hours filming one episode there one day's filming there 
and then the rest of the time I'm doing my day job and I'm doing pretty well at it so you know what I'm just gonna when my agent retired I just went I'm not gonna bother like really stressing about finding another agent and you know I I'm early 20s now and I've given it a shot for a few years and you know I'm doing really well so I'll just carry on down that route whereas now you can use all these different platforms to get yourself out there to do your own to perform your own stuff to do stand-up to do I mean there's uh, one creator do you know Mammy Banter no. uh, so she's an Irish comedian mm -hmm. but again you know she was doing sketches online and from that she got a random stand-up comedy gig at the Edinburgh Festival and she was like I never even thought I wanted to do stand-up comedy but then she basically I said to her because I'm friends with her and I messaged her I said mate you are you doing stand-up because she's doing similar stuff to me like sketches you know playing different characters and I said are you doing stand-up at the Edinburgh Festival and she was like I know I know mate I bet you know what I can't not do it because there are people who try and be stand-up comedians like all their life and don't get an opportunity like that and they're still on the circuit in you know pubs and and I'm really grateful to have this opportunity so I'm just going to do it and just sod it and say yes to everything and if I land flat on my face whatever and now she's doing sell-out tours of her stand-up you know Amazing. all around the UK mm -hmm. and now she's going abroad so again, you know, there was only one way you could ever be a stand-up comedian before, and that was going on the stand-up com comedy circuit, trying to get gigs in, you know, if you manage to get the comedy store, wow, that's amazing, if you manage to get a slot at the end of a festival. But if, you, if you're putting stuff out there online, you're getting immediate views, and those immediate views can then translate into anything, really, in life. It could end up, the world's endless you know mm -hmm. the it, it's the the possibilities can go on and on and also you never know who's seeing it so you don't even need millions of followers you get one influential person seeing it and you know like I said to you before um well no sorry I emailed you about this um that you get one influential person seeing you they don't need to be famous they don't need to be a celebrity but the, for example this one was a film director for me and he was just following me he didn't know that I trained or you know was an actress back in the day he just got in touch said look Clara I've been following you for a bit and I think you're a really good comedic actress like do you have an agent for for booking or I was like no I have an agent for nothing I don't have any agents it's me and he was like okay well would you want to audition for a couple of comedy things that I've got coming up I was like yes please this is all I've ever wanted to do and um auditioned got got a part in the film he was doing and then off the back of that an agent was already following me she didn't even realize that's what I wanted to do day the Christmas film came out she went home watched it came back messaged me hi can we have a meeting I've just watched your film I've been following you for a while and just seen the film you're in and think you're great can we chat had a chat that evening next morning I went yes please and uh, then I got on the act so Whereas it used to be like you have to genuinely go to casting directors' doors and knock on them and go, hey, here's my CV. And no, I'd really like, I know that you you cast, you know, Emmerdale and I've been a massive fan. I really want to, you know, play a part in it. Will you give me an audition? Now you can literally just be like putting your own stuff out, like a showreel, mm -hmm. showcase. And then someone can get in touch and just be like, I've been following you and I'm an agent. I've been following you. I'm a director. I've been following you. I do stand-up comedy bookings I think you'd be brilliant you know and mm -hmm. suddenly you're getting these opportunities where you don't even realize who the hell's following you out there yeah. and then and yeah like you said it's it's more prevalent now than ever because there's different ways of mm. doing it I think what's interesting is also it's a testing ground for yes. if you're if you're a comedic actor or a, a comedian you know partly what you need is you need to get that feedback about what's working and what's not yeah and here I mean you're talking about posting three times a day I mean you could be posting 10 times a day if you really wanted to yeah. just to test any kind of content and see what works yeah um, so I think from that perspective in itself is also very very useful yeah particularly um, for like you said things like stand-up comedy that you the only way was to get a slot and basically advertise it as this is, you know, you, you, you know, you can get like quarter price tickets because I'm just testing material before I go to Edinburgh yeah. or, 
and people could then go along and even famous people you know mm-hmm. famous comedians did that they're what well, they still do but they you know they'll just say you know you you can normally see you know funky Boyle uh for 40 quid but go mm-hmm. and see him for 15 quid at the comedy store because he's testing stuff out before he goes on his big tour and now you just get online and do that on and see how it you goes. You have an audience already. Yeah. Any stand up on the cards for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> Genuinely. Oh my goodness. I, I think I'm getting sweaty palms just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, I, th- I think the closest I would get to something like that would be something like um, a comedic sort of improv. A show, you know, so like a few actors would get together a, a little bit like, have I uh, not have I got news for you? Whose lines it anyway? Like that, that uh, thing that used to be on TV where the actors would be there, t- people would shout stuff from the audience, and you'd have to think up stuff or um, create little skits mm-hmm. out of, you know, they'd say, like, oh. Sensei's just come back and found her, her his wife's in bed with Sensei, and then uh, the dog comes in and blah blah blah. You know, and then you have to create it. Mm-hmm. But I, that's probably the closest thing I'd get to stand up. I feel up. like it's more terrifying doing that. You no, because you're still you're still um, no, because I f- I find that in a normal setting with friends, people I've just met, I can be spontaneously funny. And I can I I can um, I can make people laugh just by being my natural self, or being a bit you know silly or or creating a bit of a sort of alter ego while I'm doing it. But to actually sit and write <clears throat> jokes to be told by me as me, with no with no feedback no no back and forth just like for an so hour it's standing other on there almost like a like a theatre setting yeah yeah maybe it's mm. uh, yeah maybe it's that I hadn't thought of that mm. yeah maybe it's as because... a being like standalone it's just you all eyes are on you yeah right. yeah mm. and then also all eyes are on me just saying pretty much storytelling and hoping there's a gag at the end of it that mm. people will laugh at so what what I will find funny the joke might either fall flat or they'll find it funny and then I'll be like god where was I uh d- d- where do I go from here and then I go do you know what I mean yeah. like it's I, I don't know it's something about standing as yourself not playing a character mm. just talking trying to I make people you being laugh. on stage and being a stand-up you are in character already yeah but as yourself mm. you are still being yourself you're not I think that's because I find public speaking quite hard. Mm. So I think it's when I'm when I'm myself just public speaking to people, I find that harder than acting out a thing or like people wouldn't people don't normally believe that because they're like but but when you know if you walk into a pub and there's like five of us mates with five people you don't know, you'll just walk up to the table and be like, "All right guys, like da, 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 you know and just be like completely extrovert and make people laugh in that scenario. But I don't like being myself on stage, weirdly. Mm. It's very weird that. I think a lot of actors have that. I think there must be. I think there is a lot of kind of, you, you know, even like talking about like Beyonce, the queen of performance. Yeah. I mean, she has an alter ego when she goes on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah, idea that's that you true. kind of step outside of yourself and step into this character that you created. I mean, you, yeah. your skits are just you and you're the, also yeah. arguably in character. Yeah, I, d- I definitely am most mm. of the time. I am um most of the time I I am playing an alter ego like my reaction videos to um blokes or um (laughs) or uh, you know yeah but I'm always I'm always behaving like I'm this silly I mean everyone calls it like a Bridget Jones type Mm -hmm. character but I I you know this really quite pathetic you know it, it I'm not calling Bridget Jones pathetic she's brilliant but you know I, I behave like a pathetic sort of person who's like bowing down to these people mm-hmm. and like I um you know it's it's all really sort of um oh hello um 
Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't think that at all. You know, it's all really sort of um, sh- shy, sort of uh, being a bit silly, bit like getting a bit awkward, embarrassed, yeah. awkward. And I'm not like that at all in real life. But yeah. it's it's um, it's trying to... Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a character that I play mm-hmm. uh, with with the bloke ones, with the food ones. Again, it's it is a bit. I'm just being overtly sarcastic and British about it, um, without trying to offend too much. And um, so, yeah, it it is. Uh, but but it, with the stand up, it is funny because so many people ask me. They they literally just think because because you occasionally make them laugh, you must be going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> and I get messages all the time. Mm-hmm. When are you when are you next on tour? I'd love to come and see you. I'm like, what do you mean? What tour? What tour are you talking about? <laughs> I think people want to see you live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll have to think of uh, an actual thing that's not stand up mm. to do live. And I think, I think it's the Who Zines It Anyway route with a few of my other creators who do yeah. comedy, who used to be actors. I've got like three in mind now. That's it. I'll give you some commission <laughs> of all sales. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think you're right. I think it's just more that they just want to see uh, you do something live. Mm-hmm. So there will be... And there are actors who then went into doing stuff live, like Robin Williams, but then he was stand-up as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to think about that, yeah. actually, because I think that's uh, that's something... There is something about Not the audience be and at. being. I know you're saying you don't like public speaking, but I mean, I if I was like into theatre when I was younger, yeah. So I get that feeling of it's like this relational thing that happens between the performer and the audience. Yes. it's this conversation that happens, and the, you know, it's great to be able to have such a wide audience on social media, but, but there is that immediacy that. with the people, the audience with you, that is quite exceptional. It's something yeah. that's very hard for even like performers to describe and for the audience themselves, like feeling that they're living the part and like being in that and it's so, world. Yeah, you're so right because I remember loads of people used to ask me when I first started trying to be an actress, people were asking, um, so what do you prefer when I, f- <clears throat> excuse me, when I first did um, TV, mm-hmm. But they said, so what do you prefer? Do you prefer theatre or film? I went, oh my God, I was so disheartened when I did film and TV. I was like, it didn't even feel like acting. I, I said, because when you're when you're in the wings about to go on stage, you know, you've got one shot at it. You've got, you know, the, the lights go up, the curtains open. You can, you, you can just see a sea of sort of heads that are there to watch his performance. And you've like got the adrenaline. And, yeah, the adrenaline while you're in the wings. You've got one shot to get it right. You get out there, you, you say something funny or sad, the, the, the audience react, you bounce off them, you, they feed off you. It's, there's nothing like acting live. And then you, and then you do TV. <laughs> Sometimes you're acting towards someone off camera who's not even the actor, they've got a stand-in, you know, and they're, mm. they're standing in on the person's behalf because, you know, they're like, oh, I'm not in, in shop, fuck it, I might just go and have a cup of tea while my stand-in stands there and, you know, just act with them, will you? And like, hang on a sec, can you just read the lines? Because I'd quite like to, you know. But it's, uh, and then every two seconds, cut, right, yeah, that was great. We're just going to do it again, but we're going to do it from that angle. And, it, you know, mm. It's a stop and no... start. You can't get into the flow as easily. Yeah, yeah. exactly that. Mm. And the, like you said, the live. And I was talking to Richard, uh, Richard Franks, a friend of mine who, who does comedy um, sketches online. And we were being interviewed on the Vanessa Felt show. And he, he said the same. He said... He said, the thing is, it can be a lonely existence doing these things where you're not, if you're not doing sketches, which most of us aren't, with other people, because it's very rare that you firstly live near people or live with a person that you'll be doing these mm-hmm. things, <clears throat> these things with, you, you end up doing it yourself or playing multiple characters, but it's actually a lonely existence because your day-to-day job is sitting for me, mostly talking to a camera or doing sketches where you're talking, you know, to whoever off cameras if you're, but that's, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then 
even when you're posting it to your audience, your audience is non-existent. Non-existent. They're not. You in see the them room. in the comments, but you don't see the physical reaction, the yeah. laughter, and the and the energy that comes with that. Yeah, and you literally get sort of messages like, "Oh, I'm." Yeah. Oh my God! I literally just fell off my chair laughing at that. Or, or like I spat. It, you've got to remind me not to drink when I'm watching your videos. I just spat all over my face. And I thought, God, how cool would that be if you actually like yeah. performing and you saw someone drinking, feels, spitting yeah. out their drink because they've laughed at something you've done. And then it feeds you. It feeds yeah. into your energy, which is why I think a lot of actors, sort of you know, screen actors end up going to theatre, even if it's like a small production. and Oh, yeah. Because, they go back to it, their yeah, first love. Because that's what, you know, you, then you see that response, you see that feedback. And the um, money's crap as well. Even well, that's for, what I'm saying. Even it's like, for really, really big actors. Mm -hmm. Judy Dench, notoriously, always goes back to stage. And, you know, she, she won't be on a large amount of money doing it in comparison so there has to, to be another you know, reason James for doing Bond. it yeah it's because yeah. it's their first love it's their yeah. passion it's the mm. it's where they they learn to love it really mm -hmm. probably talking about create the creative process um that can take hours and hours do you have a process or how does it work when you create your skits so um good question nowadays I get I get tagged in so much that they almost give me my inspo for me. Uh, that's for the reaction videos, the comedy reactions that I do, um, either to the the blokes, the the uh, food. I get tagged in a lot of those or sent them on DMs, that sort of thing. But um, with sketch, a lot of it like some. Some of it just comes from observations. So I've got a co-writer for a couple of things I'm doing at the moment. And she quite often goes, mate, have you ever done a sketch on this? Because I was just out and da 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 you know. And, and it will be something that her kid did or she'll see another parent. And, and mate, you've got to do a, a sketch on, you know, I've just been observing these these parents at her at her kids like private school, and she's like, "You got to do it on private school parents, like <laughs> you know." And so I've done like three yeah. of those yeah. where they go to a tennis lesson. You know, they're they're getting competitive about their like three year olds playing tennis against each other, and you know, seeing each other in Aldi or whatever. But that's you know, that's come from observations of of either that I've seen or, or friends have seen, they've gone, you know when this happens, have you ever done something like that? And I'm like, so I've got a list in my notes of... It's just constantly taking notes from other people, what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of it's observation. But yeah. I try, I, a lot of the time I don't sit down and write a sketch. I'll just have it in mind and then I'll just start filming. And So you don't always all... have a script. You'll just come on and you'll oh, just go, no. wow. Uh, well, you're talking ever, about actually. improvising. That to yeah. me is the bit that scared me the most. Yeah, because that's what I find. I have to think of something, and then you're like blank goes yeah. over you. Or you have yeah. no problem with that whatsoever. No, I oh, know. <laughs> I think I would have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm already planning. You know, my my tour as an improv group with four of us, <laughs> and I don't even know if I can do it. <laughs> but um. But no, I I th I think uh, imp no improvisation is is bloody um is bloody hard, but it yeah online it's what what I tend to do is rather than have a script I have a general idea where I want it to go and then I I find that normally like because you can stop and start as well yeah you're not doing it in front of a live audience so maybe I have to rethink the live audience improv <laughs> thing <laughs> anyway. <Hope> um, <laughs> But no, I don't, I'm really into that idea though. I'm definitely going to get some of my mates on a Zoom call and see what what we can flash out. But anyway, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it is it is petrifying. Anything imp improvised, but yeah, online it's it's a lot easier to do. Mm. What's an unexpected challenge you faced when creating your content? Again, good question because I'm not sure that there's been one really that's 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 at the forefront of my I mean I'd, I'd say probably it's the it's the thinking up what you're going to do that's probably the biggest challenge because as I said if I had a script if I had 10 scripts arrive on my doorstep in 
the morning because I've got so much other stuff going on as well. Um, if, you know, if my agent went, right, Courier's coming with three scripts, you've got to film all three today, I'd be like, great, brilliant. And then I'd get it and go, that's funny, that's funny, right, I'm going to do that. So maybe I should get onto chat GDTP or whatever it's called. I Just, use it. Do you? It's excellent. I should get it to... Even if you don't end up using it. Give me comedy sketches. It, it does <laughs> do that. See, no, it does stop. it. Stop. No. I've never used yeah. it. Yeah. I'm doing a comedy... Oh, I, I shouldn't say this. this, but I'm doing this comedy <laughs> writing course. And so each week we're supposed to write some kind of like a dialogue or a skit or whatever. And, you know, quite often I will go and I will use chat GPT. And, I mean, not all of it is obviously funny and some of it is like completely useless. <laughs> yeah, but it yeah. still prompts I know, you I can't to think imagine. of it. Yes. And it does come up with some things like, okay, I quite like this phrase or I quite like this and you can combine it and can you can take you down. Yeah, into so a you room. wouldn't use the whole script, but then you'll, yeah. so you'll go, well, oh, that's really a good idea where it's come, it's, it's brought up this bit or, yeah. or th- they phrase that very funnily, like I'd use that. Or you can combine things together and you're like, okay, that works really well. So it's, 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 an, it's almost like if you were to write 20 different things yourself and then see what works. You can just do that at speed. Oh, God, I should use that and just see whether... But I'd have to type in jokey, dry, British, sarcastic skits. Go. (laughs) In terms of censoring humour or any topics that are are off-limits for you? No. I, I, I try to just say to myself you know what if someone's going to get offended they should just scroll you know it's it because comedy is subjective so Mm -hmm. it's it's um I always quote Ricky Gervais when this comes up because he you know he is really offensive you know but he but you know I've been see him in stand-up three times now and each time I I I actually can't believe what he's saying after that (laughs) but it's so funny but he always says, you know, the, the subject of a joke isn't the target of the joke. So just because you mention race or you mention abortion or you mention adoption or you mention uh, genocide or any of these things, they're not the target of the joke because it's the subject of, of something that's funny. So do people nowadays, as soon as you mention those things, they're so politically correct that they end up getting, you know, oh my God, I can't believe you made a joke about that. And you're like, but hang on. I, d- I did a joke where I mentioned adoption and I had the whole adoption community on Instagram going crazy. But then all the people who had been adopted going I found it hilarious you know I, I, don't, I don't understand why people are kicking off and like, da, da, da. so it's I don't think anything's off limits um and another Ricky Gervais quote just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right and it's uh, and you know it it is we've got to stop being so sensitive when it comes to jokes otherwise comedy is going to be out the window mm-hmm. I think like nothing is funny anymore yeah Mm. Yeah, because everyone's going to be offended by something. He said one time that he made a joke about um, allergies and how, like, when he was younger or something, that like, allergies just didn't really exist that much, mm. apart from like hay fever, you know. But people just didn't weren't completely intolerant to this or that. And then, and then this woman got in touch with him on Twitter and was like, I "Can't believe you made a joke about allergies. Like, my daughter's got a nut allergy, and like, she would literally go into." That anaphylactic shock you know really went mm. hell for leather and he wrote back you know this just proves my point that everyone is offended by their thing because he said you know I make jokes about rape the war as I said before genocide you know race religion and you're offended by my allergy joke and so everyone's got their thing. Someone that they somewhere like to be. is going to be offended by that one specific thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Any skits you've regretted posting? I'm sure there have been. I was on the cusp with the adoption, uh, adoption one. I was on the cusp just because everyone was going so crazy. And then I started getting like real hate in the DMs. Mm. And then people were reposting. I had to... DM them and say, 
I'm just about to report you for copyright infringement because you're just reposting my stuff without my permission. And then it was getting so much that I was literally blocking about 30 people a day. And then and then I thought, do I just take it down? And then someone sent me that Ricky Gervais quote. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's them winning. And it's not even that it's not even offensive. It's not like I've just you know, it was during lockdown and I basically said mums, uh, parents during lockdown and it was my daughter asking me if she was adopted. <laughs> and then I, is it, and, and I was like, no, I only put the ad out yesterday. <laughs> you know, and it was like, it was like pe- how parents feel during lockdown mm. or something like that. And it wasn't even, you know, you don't even put ads out if you want your kid to be adopted. I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous <laughs> that that even became like something that people were taking seriously. Yeah. And then I thought, and then it, it, people kept, people kept uh, saying to me, no, just remember what, you know, Jimmy Carr said here. That, remember what Ricky Gervais said here. Remember what, uh, you know, all of these very sort of close it's to the almost, bone comedians have done. It's almost like if you're not offending, you're not a good comedian. Yeah, 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 that's true. It's like I'd you're not trying that. hard enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're being not... a bit too sitting on the fence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is what social media is about. I mean, the things that really blow up are the ones that are on like polar ends. Oh, yeah. And then everybody has their, you know, opinions shared and starting fights with each other. Yeah. How do you deal with the haters? Um, weirdly... It's so at the start, I didn't get any because obviously you get more when you get bigger. Then I started getting bigger and then I got loads, like loads just even to do with my looks. Just like, oh, look at bloody uh, hair. Like it looks like shredded wheat. Or you, you might want to sort out that front tooth before you, you know, da, 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 you know, and that does not bother me at all. I mean, because I don't see that as hate. I just see it as a, probably a kid being, a, you know, commenting on my looks, whatever. Yeah, great. Um, and plus they're commenting. So it's like doing the algorithm a world of good for me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and then weirdly, as I've got even bigger, I've got less hate. Mm-hmm. And actually, you know what? The other day, I'd only heard, I've only heard of, you know, th- this... Um, site called tattle have you heard of it no oh oh i shouldn't have told you <laughs> <laughs> oh no um no so not because you you know you'll have a hate on it but it is just horrific it's mm. really bad and i only heard of it people kept talking like they didn't want to say it online and they they would mention this to, but because they didn't want to promote it they would go they'd be like you know uh, i saw this comment about me on i won't say the name of the site you know and I'd be like what site is everyone talking about when they say these things and then I said to I messaged one of my friends because she had done a post about it. I said what's this site that people bang on about where people are horrific about online creators and they said oh it's Tattle Life and I said what and I said what happens they're like it's really bad basically it's an online community of basically trolls <laughs> just talking starting up threads just purely about a creator and then it will just be people going hell for leather on that person and someone created this site on purpose y- yeah and it's wow. massive and then they when you join apparently they give you all the rules and regulations that we do not tolerate this this but they do like none <laughs> of their moderators take anything down so the other day i thought i might just because nothing's gonna offend me that much so i thought i might just type in clara batten oh my and god tattle and just see if anything's come up because a lot of my friends i just saw their names popping up and i was like oh my god how have they got hate because i was thinking i never really get it anymore and mm-hmm. you know i might get some being like that's so unfunny or or, you know, you missed the mark on that one. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I've just lost a load of... I've just lost a load of followers because I, you know, lip-synced Trump. Mm-hmm. You know, and I lost a lot. But I don't care because, you know, it, the great thing about Brits is that we, we on the whole, we don't take offence. If we're doing political comedy or satire, whatever side of the fence you're on, if someone did a joke about, you know, Boris Johnson... Of which I did many, by the way. But then, you know, and back then I I had voted Conservative, but then someone did, you know, 
a piss take on the leader of the opposition. I wouldn't go, you wouldn't be like, oh, but I voted Conservative. Like, I can't believe you're taking the piss out of Boris Johnson. You know, whatever. I wouldn't unfollow someone because they're doing satirical political comedy. I'll be like, okay, that was funny. But, um, but you know, the fact that I did a Trump thing and literally... God, I can't believe the amount of people. I, I used to like you. Uh, all these Trump supporters coming out of the woodwork. Oh, and you, oh, God, you really missed the mark on this. I thought better of you, Clark. You know, all that. I'm like, shut up. Anyway, so that's about the extent of my mm. trolling. So I went on this site and typed in my name. I thought, I was ready for a lot. And I could only find one thing. And it, and it, and it was just someone slagging off mumfluencers, you know, like, mums who are influencers online then someone just commented i still find clara batten very funny <laughs> and i was literally like yes the one I'm hater winning. <laughs> the one semi-hater yeah i was oh. waiting for it i was like come on yeah go on what have you got to say about me it's like i still find clara batten quite funny <laughs> like, oh, okay thanks <laughs> Oh, I mean, social media is such a funny world because I mean, I, I'm I'm horrified to hear of this the site that exists where literally everybody who wants to vend or who's just hate creating even more hate with each other. I I just find that abhorrent. Oh god! I mean, it's it already really enough. It's horrific. Mm-hmm. I won't I won't go on it now. I just went on there one time to see if I was on it's it. It's like, oh, what juicy content can I borrow from oh, my god, kids? Actually, yeah, that's a, that's an idea. Oh, yeah. There's something in, in that, for sure, that's, t- that's like, piss-takey. Mm-hmm. Then there's someone on Instagram who's brilliant, who's, um, who's, sh- she's called, um, her handle is Tatlers Unmasked, and she is, br- she's never shown her face. Mm-hmm. She never, she's never posted an actual post. It's all stories. But she unmasks, she delves really deeply into the people who are saying the most horrific stuff. She finds out where they work. She puts up their photo, wow. the place they work, what it says on their LinkedIn, then their comments that they've put on... Ta- it's literally... She's it's like a, a detective. Yeah, she's like that. Wow. And then people... St- and then she goes, oh, look, they found out that... Uh, she writes like, oh, look, they found out that I found out who they wa- who they are. And then she'll screenshot them saying, does anyone know who this um, Tatler and Mast is? Uh, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> then they get... Take her down. <laughs> they get really... Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, if I... If, if I, if I uh, want to feel like I want to, you know, sit there with popcorn and, and look as I go on to hers. I'm like, yeah, you're doing good deeds here. I, I, I bloody <laughs> you're doing love this it. Service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Social media. I mean, you know, so we're talking about how you do a skit and then, you know, people will unfollow you. It's like, well, good riddance because there's so many people out there that actually the opportunity is to find people who find you funny or yeah. interesting or of value. So you really find your own audience that way. Exactly. And mm. I want, to, I, I don't want, to appeal to the masses either i want to get rid of the people who don't quite get the sort of warped sense of humor i sometimes have or the touching on a political uh joke of how people you know how people behave in society or you know i don't want to um i don't want everyone to love myself because that would that be a boring place. Yeah, I, I find the stuff that have done the best on TV that have the most amount of viewers in comedy, I think, is bloody shit. So I will watch it and go, "How do people find this funny?" But the masses love it. Mm-hmm. So, so it, that doesn't actually mean anything. Just because it's got a high viewership doesn't actually mean that they've all got great sense of humor. It just means that. It's really easy watching, and it and it appeals to <laughs> the common denominator, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's it, really. So I so I don't I don't really mind. Yeah, I'd rather lose people and have a core group who get me. Yeah. Than um than just have everyone everyone there. Hmm. How do you see your content evolving going forward? Well, yeah, that's a really good question as well because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because I'm. I never thought I'd do reaction videos, right? And then I did this, the first food one, and it took off. And then I just started getting tagged, and I was like, oh, I'll do, like, one of those a week. 
And now I've sort of become known for that. And I only started doing them in like November or something or October. Mm -hmm. And out of four years, that's now what people are like, oh, I love your food videos. I get stopped in the street and people are like, hey, God, oh my God, I just watched that one with all the butter. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, you know, I only just started doing that. So when you say content evolving, you're right, it does actually, but which I never thought actually happened. But um, so I, I do so many different types of things. I think so long as I, I stick generally with comedy and that's where my passion lies with comedic acting as well. Um, although I always thought I liked drama more, like act, like proper drama acting, until I started doing comedy mm -hmm. acting during the pandemic, just for my own stuff. And now I, I really, really love it. I what that's that's what I'd ultimately like to do. But the, um, I, I, I think I'd just keep doing some observational stuff keep doing the reaction videos because I've got so many series now mm -hmm. I've got my family stuff my cooking with Cressy videos my cooking uh, dishes that I've taken the piss out of videos with Cressy tasting them um <laughs> you know I've got make loads of makeup because I just love makeup so I test a lot of makeup get sent a lot of stuff to review and I try and even keep that quite comedic so I think I'm really just if if stuff just suddenly appeals to me, then it might evolve. But um, yeah, there's been talks. I was talking to my um, co-writer about potentially doing little bits of. We're writing a sitcom at the moment, and we're talking about potentially doing little bits of that online. But then I don't not I don't want to not do it justice. If you see what I mean, because. Because I'll be playing a 24-year-old bloke in it. Wow, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the, 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 uh, our protagonist mm. in the sitcom is an aristocratic 23-year-old um, awkward bloke who hasn't had a very, uh, despite being from a high-class background, which is often the case, uh, not often the case, but doesn't mean you have the best childhood often, you know, sent to boarding school early age, m might have some difficulties and parents never been that loving towards him, all that sort of stuff. And anyway, he moves to London and um, ever since we started writing this, we started it about 12 years ago, but then took a massive break. Then we had kids and when I started doing Better Online, Finney said, should we start writing that sitcom again? We should just get it done. And I was like, yeah. So we have nailed the pilot now. But every time we read it, when we write another scene, cause she's not a performer, but she's a brilliant writer. So she says to me, like, okay, let's read it. Like, And then I always read all of the parts, how we've written it or how I see that we've written it. So I... Sort of always do Jeremy and say, you know, oh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm basically right. And then I even like get up and do his walk, like how I imagine him. And then she's like, she's always in hysterics and she's like, mate, I can't have, because she's the one who thought up this character originally. She used to do a blog on him. She went, mate, I can't have anyone else but you play Jeremy. And I was like, what? No, you know, that's what she was like, no, I can't. So anyway, the people in the industry who we've given the script to to read, like the director of the film I was in and stuff, I said, he said a lot of, he said it's brilliant. I laughed out loud, which is very rare for me. And he said, but a lot of what you want to come from Jeremy will come in the casting. And I'm like, yeah, okay, on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he was like yeah I said Philly okay bear with and I was like Philly um Philly really wants me to play Jeremy <laughs> and then he went and then he left me a voice note back and he went that is a fucking stroke of genius <laughs> and I went no and he went yes he's like brilliant yes yes yeah so anyway so that's what we're going for me playing a 23 year old so what's the next step for the sitcom so you, what 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 stage is it at now so um 
Yeah, so we've got the pilot. So, you know what? We might just try and get some money to film the pilot because I want to do it well. I don't want to do, like, me wearing a shit wig, you know. I want to I take it seriously and, like, get it out there seriously. I don't want to... But it, it's really good, if I don't mind saying so myself. But I, we're, but I mean, the amount of time it's taken us to write this one episode very well is a long time. So, um, so it should be good. Um, but yeah, we're really, we're really proud of it. And and the production companies that have read it have given, I mean, incredible feedback. So if anyone's listening who is a commissioner for TV or just wants to fund us making the pilot i should do a gofundme yes mm. or what's the other one crowd crowdfunding crowdfunding mm-hmm. i should do that you should do that i just suddenly thought why don't i just yeah. ask online if if there's any like person who wouldn't miss like 40 grand you know if they wanted to fund us filming the pilot and then I thought, well, actually, rather than asking one person to fund 40... Why don't I just say online, I've got to go fund me to do the pilot? 100%. <gasps> You've got the platform. You've got audience already. Oh, my God. <laughs> why haven't I thought about... I'm sure Philly has said this before, actually, and I, she said something no, about No, no, no. You thought of it on yeah. my podcast. Yeah, no, I did. I did. No, no, no. I think she said something about, like, one of... One of her friends had, like, she was like, she's minted. She wouldn't miss it. I'll ask her if she'll fund it or something. <laughs> but we kept saying, like, we should just ask, like, someone we know who's really rich. Yeah. Like, do you just, you know, just so we can get it off the ground, we'll pay you back when it does really well. <laughs> but well, I'll just I'll just ask, like, 40,000 people to give a quid each. Yeah. <laughs> or 800,000 people. How hard can it be? To fund, <laughs> to fund the whole series. <laughs> Two things have come out of this now crowdfunding and our improvisation not improvisation something sketch show sketch yeah. show on yeah. theater stage live that's it yeah that's it all right, right see you later i've got to get on to it <laughs> i've got to get on to it yeah no i'm i'm very excited for you i oh, think thanks. i love the story of the fact that you know you had ambitions when you were younger put that on hold had your family and then through the power of social media and creativity and just bloody going for it, you know, you've you've created a career that you would have been so oh, proud of. I would have been then. so happy. And you are happy now. Yeah, I know. I, I really yeah. feel very, very grateful to, you know, it's, it's all of the followers and support really from mm. from everyone that's that's um, that's allowed me to genuinely earn money out of what I love doing every day it's brilliant and and I can only see things um getting better yeah yeah Clara thank you so much for coming on to the show no like, thank you for having me. I feel like I've just talked at you the whole time no honestly you can do that anytime like you just bring so much light and energy and fun oh, and I just feel you. so energized by this conversation so thanks for letting me um talk about everything it's been great it's oh, been really been good thank, thank you, you so much thank you good luck with everything cheers <laughs> You've been listening to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. As promised, I'm going to be reading some of the reviews that you've been leaving on Apple Podcasts. And today we have Sunny D7 saying, essential listening. This is such a brilliant podcast. I recommend it to people all the time. Thank you. I love the range of guests and they always have different and challenging perspectives. I learn something new every single time. Thank you, Sunny D, and keep them coming. If you like these inspiring stories of leaders from all walks of life and you really want to support our show, the best thing you can do is follow or subscribe on whatever platform that you're listening. So again, thank you so much and I'll see you next week.